here? Okay, this is sound is good. <laughs> You're just standing. Okay, well, this is low. Okay, so um, you probably guessed it by seeing uh, the, uh, the the little banners that are there. This year we're celebrating uh, 30, 30th anniversary of the PWU uh, 100 series of engine. It's uh, it's a proud moment. Uh, if you remember last year, Pratt Whitney celebrated significant history in its 85th anniversary as a company. That was in 2013, and we also celebrated the 50th anniversary of the PT6. So. And you know it's 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 this uh, commitment we've had to turboprop engines since uh, since the inception of Pratt Whitney, and and particularly since the early 60s, the 100 started back in the, the design initial design in uh, 1979 with a demonstrator, and then in the mid 80s really came the the first certification. Um, you know, the numbers, I think, speak for themselves. I'm very impressed to see all the numbers that, uh, that Paul uh, has, has put up with 5,300 orders already for the, the pure power engines. Uh, the 100 has done extremely well as, with, uh, within the last 30 years. We've delivered over and produced over 8,000 engines, and 6,000 of those engines are still in service. Uh, 155 million operating hours, and even more cycle, because these are short-haul operations of the, uh, the 100 engines many operators, many countries, and, and over 38 different models certified on many of the platforms that, that uh, came about from day one and still uh, still today. So I think, you know, just a little walk through history. Uh, it started in uh, 1983. Basically, we certified in December 1983 the first uh, uh, two engines, which was a PW 115 and a PW 120. Both were to power the Dash 8 the ATR and the Embraer 120. Uh, as you can see, the first two production engines were produced in January 1984, 30 years ago. Uh, ATR had its first flight in, uh, in August of that year, and uh, uh, I was there, believe it or not. Uh, the, uh, in September 1984, uh, they, we certified the 128, which is a different version of the, of the uh, Bombardier, uh, in those days, the Havilland uh, product. Then first delivery to Embraer, and finally the engine came into service in December of 1984 with a Dash 8-100 with uh, the company called No Ron Terre. Sure. Move this out a bit. It's a bit less, a bit less noisy. And then, as you can see, ATR followed the next year in, in early 85, and engine to service at Embraer again that year. So it sort of all started for us in those time, and then it had has not stopped. You know, ATR moved on to deliver to, to build ATR-72 and many other versions of it. Uh, Fokker and ATP and Dornier and, and many other customers followed suit and, and, and adopted the, uh, the 100 uh, engine. You know, in the end, we, we like to think that the 100, you know, made, it was a very significant uh, uh, milestone in Pratt Whitney's history and in more ways than one. First of all, you saw the market, you saw the size of the, of the installed base of the customers we serve, but it was a type of product that needed differentiation in terms of support. We were, uh, in those days, uh, mostly business aviation type customers with the King Airs and the PT-6 and many applications and the JT-15D. But typically these operators, these customers, they fly 400 hours a year and, and, and things happen at a certain pace. Well, we knew that when we introduced, we got into the regional airlines, things would be different. We sort of had a glimpse of it, but a lot of PT-6 uh, being used on Embraer Bandirantes on short 360, so we sort of knew the business, but we knew that when the numbers would uh, would become large, we needed to do things differently. That's where we sort of started initiatives for other company like our our customer help desk, our 24/7 help desk, became uh, the uh, you know it was put into place. Uh, we part, part distribution center. We developed the network of of collaborators were were different. So basically. It, it, it transformed our company, not only from a product standpoint, and, and created uh, an amazing legacy uh, for us, but it also allowed us to develop the company differently in a support system that today, is, I think, is second to none and continues to serve our customers uh, well for today and for the future. And the success of, of serving customers uh, for the future uh, will come through continuing to ship you know, quality PL100 engines that today 
serve uh, are, are, are produced for the ATR-72, the MA-60, and the Q-400. I'll include the 150 and the 100 Legacy. It's, a, it's, a, it's an engine we consider in those families. But we are preparing for the future. We see the future of, of 70 to 90 seat uh, type aircraft uh, being, being the, 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 generation, the next generation of aircraft. Airline customers are asking us to produce aircraft with, uh, you know, to, to, to produce an engine for an ID seat passenger aircraft. That there's an airline demand for this, and there's a lot of interest at the OAM level for, the, uh, for, that, uh, for that aircraft. And today, there's no program announced yet. There's a lot of work being done in the, in the, by all the, uh, uh, the OEM customers, and, and you, you can ask them directly uh, who, who and what are their plans, but we're not standing still. We know there's, uh, there's people working plans, and, and we're, we're really focused on developing a unique platform, a new centerline engine. It's not a derivative of, a, of one of our engines. It's a brand new design for the regional market, the same as the 100 was 30 years ago. So the, the same way we produce an engine uniquely designed for the, uh, for the regional market, we're going to do the same thing again for the next generation uh, of engines. Today we're looking at five to 7,000 shaft horsepower as the sweet spot for developed for an engine of that uh, of that class. So where are we? Well, we are. We've uh, I've said uh, many of you know we've we've launched our, our phase one demonstrator last year, and it was it was a multi-phase approach. You know, first of all, we did component testing of, of the comp of component uh, level testing of the compressor. The compressor is the really at the heart of the technology that we need to demonstrate for the uh, for this next generation of engines. So we did a lot of component testing of the of the uh, the compressor. We did the first uh, two stages of compression to basically I didn't uh, clarify understand basically in inlet uh, conditions that are critical in terms of the overall performance. We did impeller testing as well to to understand the uh, you know the, the the hottest part of the of the compressor. And we've put all of those together, and we went and had a full compressor run a demonstrator at the MTU, at an MTU facility in Munich. They were the partners of that, that Pratt & Whitney, uh, he started for use for the gear turbo fan. So they've got a rig capable of running very high power and high power compressor. We did the phase one testing, uh, and it went very well. All our key performance indicators were, were matched. We did most of the low speed mapping of the, of the compressor to determine that we had good surge margin, good, uh, good performance across the envelope, and we did some, some higher speed points. Phase two is optimization, and that's going to go through and run through to 2014. Basically, uh, throughout the years, we're going to go back to the MTU facilities and complete all the high speed running of the, of the, uh, of the compressor. And we're do also doing system level uh, uh, um, testing, with the top testing, but optimization with the, uh, with the OEMs. As you may have noticed on the previous, uh, uh, previous slide, we intend to provide a fully integrated power plant system. Well, that can be you know, definitely the engine, the propeller, and the control system. We will develop that, and you saw on the, um, the, the same way that he started for our testing, the gear turbo fan on our Boeing 747, uh, you saw that one on the MRJ installation was a, a pod installed on the, uh, like a stub wing installed on the, on the 747. We're going to test the gear turbo, the, uh, the NGRT at the same position on, on this Boeing 747. So being able to offer our customers uh, an engine that's installed on the aircraft, fly it at altitude across the, across the entire envelope before they can install it on their aircraft. So today, you know, we're looking at obviously optimizing propeller size, propeller speed, uh, control system overall, but we're also looking at what we can do in terms of electrical system and today, as, as people more move to different variety of, of, of electrical system, bleed system at the aircraft level, then it's a matter of how we configure the engine. And we still have the flexibility to do that, and we're doing that with uh, OEM uh, customers uh, today. Um, I talked about transforming the company, creating the, uh, uh, the, the customer help desk many years ago at the start of the PW100. Well, we've, we've continued to evolve our aftermarket uh, support. Uh, basically, the customer help desk used to be a phone line which you call to get technical information or, or, or clarification on, 
on, on some technical matters in the insula in the in the maintenance manual. Well, we've moved on to the to, to a new level of, of event management. Today, we got a fully integrated uh, uh, customer first center with which first line response. Of course, they do answer technical queries, but the people are integrated with people from logistics, from spare part, from warranty. All all the elements of, of support are integrated into our customer first center. And that has, has, again, transformed the way we are able to serve customers. Well, it worked very well, but we also found that you know, to, to, to really leverage this worldwide, it was, it was important to also have local language capability. Well, we could have implemented that in Montreal, but we also had found an advantage to be able to duplicate the exact system in Singapore. So today, we have two customer-first centers, one in Montreal, which is the largest one, but a, a similar unit. A similar um, system, if you want, and I call it a system more than just uh, a desk sort of thing. It's, it's really a system. They've got, I think they, they've got widescreen for those who visited practically a well, location of, of, of all maintenance events that are happening across the planet, and it is real time. So if somebody from China or from Japan wants, and, or Indonesia wants to have local language capability, it's much easier for us because we have a shop there with multilingual. Uh, and capability to find the right person to help with uh, with our customers, and of course, with the parts and the and the technicians and the mobile repair team available in Singapore, they can dispatch throughout Asia. And Asia is really a growth area for the uh, the, 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 the current turbo prop and the next generation. One of the other elements of, of the, that were were really pushing in terms of technology and affordable technology is what we call our DPHM solution, which is a health management solution for our customers. And one of the elements is what we call the FAST system, which is flight acquisition storage and transmission unit. You know, we, we know today that in large transport, you know, they, more and more there's a lot of data being, being produced across the, uh, the aircraft and transmitted and stored for future maintenance event. We found a low cost, way of being able to deal with, the, with that data. It's, uh, it's a system that is, uh, looks like this ball box, it's installed, it taps in into the, the current data streams that are available onto the aircraft, and then we can program it to measure what the customers want to have. When you land, this thing is, not op is operational in flight and receiving data and storing data, and, uh, but it does not transmit in flight. So as soon as you land, you got a wait on wheel signal. This this unit is capable of transmitting that data via cell phone network uh, to, to our the Pratt Mini servers. And then the data can be repurposed for the purpose of obviously understanding whatever fault codes might have existed for the operators to take measures and or for aircraft, for the aircraft uh, and for the airline to be able to use it for their quality management system. Now, we, of course, the large airline have got this uh, through a car system, very expensive, System. We thought that you know, to the, the, the success in the regional airline world depends on being able to to, to develop affordable solution. This is, is 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 a system that is not expensive to operate. It uses common cell phone chips that you can you can get locally. It, it works worldwide, and and we have today uh, certified uh, a lot of type certificate on DPHM solution, more particularly on the fast system, which is our latest technology. We, we first certified it on the Falcon 7X. It is, it is available on a Q400. Qantas, a few years ago, announced that they were, they, they were the launch customer. They helped us to develop the, uh, the STC to install it on. And today we're working with customers of ATR to be able to install it on, uh, on an ATR aircraft. And, and through this year, we'll make it available for the ATR 72. And more and more, this is gaining momentum in the marketplace. And customers see a lot of value being able to have immediate access to data and be able to uh, to to access it and uh, just you know sort of make this position about the maintenance action that needs to be taken. So that's it for my uh, presentation. Again, 